Welcome to my YouTube channel, everybody. I must start by apologizing to my regular viewers for this video being released a day later than usual. I hope it is worth the wait. Now, for this week's video, I would like to go through the development of a very large and slightly unusual layout design. It was unusual for two reasons. Firstly, my customer for this project is a woman. There are very few of them in this male-dominated hobby, and this is the first time one of them has commissioned me for a layout design. Now, secondly, the layout itself is somewhat unusual. I will get to that in a moment. Now, before I show you the layout space, I need to share a little background. The customer lives on a farm in rural Pennsylvania. Although she was happy for me to publish a layout design, she asked to remain anonymous, and I must respect her wishes. So I will refer to her simply as Miss F. Railroading has been in Miss F's blood for generations. Her maternal grandfather was an engineer for the Pennsylvania Railroad and some ancestors on her father's side of the family were related to the Van Swierenens. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Miss F is actually one of the few layout design customers who I've met in person. If it were just a layout design job, there would probably have been no reason to meet, but she plans to have me build it for her and insisted on inspecting my workshop in person. Since I am a married man, I met her with my wife present just to avoid the possibility of jealousy or appearance of impropriety. I was also concerned about the state of my shop because it's not nearly big enough to, to construct the entire layout in one go. Instead, I had planned to start at one end of the layout and build it a section at a time, then store the completed sections in my basement while I work on the next. Well, the meeting left me in a state of shock, wondering if I was dreaming. Miss F flew into Nashville in her private jet and rented a limousine for the drive here. She seemed more interested in the land behind my shop than in the building itself, and asked me if I'd be willing to extend the shop building. I thought the deal was lost, because I don't have the funds to do that. But then she said she would pay for the addition. And I'm still having trouble convincing myself that she's for real. And for the time being, all I have is the contract for the design work. So keep my fingers crossed there. Now here is the site for the railroad. It is a barn on her farm. Now allowing for the addition of some inner insulated stud walls, the available space is 88 feet by 46 feet, although not all of it will be used for the railroad. Along one side of the room, Miss F wants a half-sized replica of a steam locomotive. I told her I didn't have the means to build it, but she only wants me to build the railroad. She has connections in a machining company that could build the locomotive for her. Originally, it was going to be a Pensy K4 Pacific, but then she decided on a New York, Chicago and St. Louis 284 because there will already be several K4s on the railroad and she figured that the Berkshire would be a good tribute to the other side of her family, although it will be constructed predominantly of brass sheet instead of nickel plate. She also wanted to allocate space for a workshop, a crew lounge, a library to house her extensive railroad book and memorabilia collection, as well as a kitchenette for serving refreshments to visitors and a bathroom for handling returns. For the railroad, Miss F wanted three distinct elements, all of which had to be depicted on a grand scale. The main layout had to represent the Pensy's four-track main line in HO scale, including a representation of Horseshoe Curve, which ideally she wanted to be the first scene visitors would see as the end of the route. She also wanted a big freight yard, an eight-track passenger terminal, an extensive cityscape representing Harrisburg, where she grew up, although she didn't care if the track arrangement was anything like the prototype. It also didn't matter to her that we would be eliminating about 100 miles of track between the two locations. She wanted the cityscape to dominate the layout and be its centerpiece. The third element she requested was a busy single-track industrial branch line serving many heavy industries. Additionally, she wanted enough staging capacity to keep the four-track main line busy without obvious repetition of trains. The period represented had to be April of 1934. April is her birth month and her parents named her after it. And 1934 was the first year her grandfather drove the Broadway Limited. So the railroad had to feature a model of this train as it appeared in that year. To help depict the time of year accurately, we figured we would need vibrant spring foliage on the trees and we could include a model of a church advertising their Easter service and Easter egg hunt. 
Here is how I propose dividing the space. We see the kitchenette and the bathroom either side of the main entrance. I added a coat closet since Pennsylvania gets quite cold in the winter. I have the crew lounge in this corner here, convenient to the main entrance, and the workshop at the far end with its own separate entrance, which will also serve as an emergency exit if it is ever necessary. Between them will be the Berkshire, with the long wall behind it becoming Miss F's library and display area. The base units we figured should be at window sill height, giving wide ledges for displaying large pieces. And then the tall display cabinets can extend up between the windows, although we haven't yet decided how tall they should be. The ceiling of the barn will be about 12 feet up, and she doesn't want to have to climb a ladder to reach the top. With space allocated for everything else on this F's wish list, there was still a huge space available for the railroad. This rectangle here represents the approximate outer limits of the main layout, about 65 feet by 24. Now by leaving six feet around the main layout, there is plenty of room to come back later and build the industrial branch all the way around the walls from a junction probably in this corner near the workshop. Now this is what I came up with for the layout design. It is by no means a finished plan. I have simply drawn in one possible main line alignment and allocated space for all the major elements. Many of the tracks haven't even been hooked up properly yet. The minimum radius on this plan is 42 inches. Originally I was hoping for 48, but the horseshoe curve area looked a little forced with the 48 inch curves. It fitted the space much better by reducing the curve values slightly. Now starting in the staging area, there are 24 tracks, six for each of the main lines, and each is long enough to hold two long trains or three shorter ones. So that should be enough to keep the lines busy with no obvious repetition. The visible section emerges at the Galitz and Tunnels, and although they are much closer to the horseshoe curve than they should be, they are in about the right orientation with 180 degrees of left-hand curvature before the horseshoe. Horseshoe curve itself is the first thing visitors see as they walk in, just as the customer requested. Unfortunately, it's a little off center, but that couldn't be helped. So at the curve is always viewed in the correct context. I've stopped the aisle short and allowed space for the park and reservoir. Now for maintenance access, the bench work will have to be built strong enough to walk on. Modern resins are hard wearing, so that walking on the surface of the lake shouldn't cause any damage, provided one wears sneakers and is careful not to track any grit onto it. Now, despite the expansiveness of the scenery in this area, ensuring that it is built and fully detailed from the back forward will avoid the need for pop-up access hatches altogether in this area. And as I mentioned earlier, Provided one is able to walk on water, maintaining the track and the curve shouldn't be a problem. Now, just as we transition from the forested mountains to the city centre, the freight and passenger lines diverge. The freight lines cross over a lift bridge, allowing access to the central aisle without the need for a duck under. The passenger lines head back towards the centre of the layout and through the main cityscape. Now, in addition to the eight track passenger terminal requested, I've located the Railway Express Agency loading docks and a coach yard at one end and the engine terminal at the other. And behind it all is over 200 square feet allocated to the city centre. This is one area where numerous access hatches will be needed for construction, but most of them can probably be sealed off once the layout is built because the track is towards the front and near the aisle. It's a single track looping around behind the engine terminal and diving under the passenger main line, allowing one engine terminal to serve the freight yard as well. Now the operator aisle between the freight and passenger facilities represents the Susquehanna River. Although the real river is very shallow and not suitable for navigation, I have used modelers licensed at a wharf scene and thus justify the presence of the lift bridge at one end. A wharf scene was something else the customer mentioned in her design questionnaire, although she wasn't sure if I could accommodate it for her. Beyond Harrisburg, the freight and passenger lines converge again, and there is room for one more scene across the back of the layout before trains disappear from view to staging, and we haven't decided what to put in this area yet. 
Now I haven't even started to draw in the industrial branch line yet, as I wasn't feeling particularly industrious, and it won't be built for quite some time anyway, as long as the space is allocated for it and we know how it joins on, there'll be plenty of time to design it later. Well, that just about sums up the layout. I've already mentioned the half-size Berkshire. This will not simply be a static model. Firstly, Miss F plans to have miniature video cameras mounted in the cabs of some of her locomotives, connected to a closed circuit TV system and a monitor mounted in the front cab window of the Berkshire. Operators will then be able to drive trains from an authentic steam locomotive cab. The other, even more ambitious plan for the Berkshire is to have it generate real steam. Although it would be well nigh impossible to pipe steam to the railroad and have it feed the HS scale locomotives, Miss F figures that the next best thing would be to feed a turbine and generator hidden in the smoke box and to generate electricity much in the same way as a commercial coal-fired power plant, albeit on a much smaller scale. The locomotive chimney would already be in the right place to hide a functional smokestack extending up through the roof. And a conveyor could be built outside the building with a roof hatch above the tender allowing for coal deliveries. So now that the layout is effectively a genuinely steam-powered railroad, the engineer's job really does become realistic. Miss F figures that this operating position will most likely fall to her during group operating sessions because of the license necessary to drive a steam locomotive. And although she is already certified, it's probably unreasonable to expect all visiting operators to go through all the training beforehand. The fireman's job won't require any special training, although a certain level of physical fitness will be needed. During operating sessions, the building's entire electrical system will be turned over to the steam generator. If the fireman doesn't shovel coal fast enough, the room lights will start to dim. This will be his only warning to work faster, lest he be responsible for shutting down the whole railroad and plunging the room into darkness. Before closing, there is one other feature that I have to mention. Uh, notice the size of the bathroom here. Miss F thought that it would be a dreadful waste to dump all that hot water after an operating session, so she asked me to include a big sunken tub in the bathroom for her to relax in after running the railroad. I did suggest we also add a laundry, since there appeared to be room for it, but she just told me to make the tub bigger instead. Now, when I sent off this plan for approval, Miss F told me that although she really liked the plan, she wanted some big changes, and that she needed to meet me in person again to discuss them. Now, since my wife was out of town that week, and I didn't want to be alone in my office with another woman, I attached a head cam to my dog and opened up a live Skype connection to my wife's laptop so she could see everything that went on. Now, soon after her arrival, Miss F opened up a photo album showing me some pictures of a real nickel plate Berkshire that she had managed to purchase from a museum and planned to restore. She now wanted to double the length and width of the room to incorporate the full-size locomotive and to build the railroad in O scale instead. All her HO scale locomotives and passenger cars would now need display cases and she'd be selling off her freight car collection. I looked at her and said, April, you're a fool. <laughs>